Hey everybody, uh, my name is Reed. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be uh, repairing a Sencor PR570. Uh, it's a safety analyzer with a variable isolation transformer in it. And these are made in the good old US of A actually in, uh, in South Dakota. So I, I purchased one off of eBay. I got it for pretty cheap. Uh, it said there was some issues with it. It was sold as for parts, kind of as is, no returns. And we'll see what we can make of it today. Uh, one thing I did notice in the pictures is that uh, there was something funny with the isolated output voltage knob, uh, which runs the variac in the back. So uh, we'll pull the cover off and see what we got. Okay, so I took a ton of screws off and kind of wanted to see what was going on when you turn this. And it turns this knob here which in turn looks like it just turns a variac in the back here and you can see it's not making very good contact with the coil I mean this this little peg that's that pin that you can see just barely right in there should be touching the very top of this coil um, coil of uh, wire and when it does that, that's when it makes the connection and is able to actually adjust the voltage. So I think we're going to need to fix that. Fortunately, this knob that was broken off looks, looks like it's in good condition. I mean, I'm probably just going to pull it off and see if I can either 3D print um, a knob to go in its place or... Uh, try to re replace uh, the part itself, just get one from the manufacturer, see what the cost of that is, and just, just grab the knob off of that. But yeah, this one looks like the real issue. And oh, we can even pull it just about all the way out. I mean, that's really something. I didn't recognize that before. But yeah, no, this is this is going to require some sort of repair. So I just want to show you with it turned on. Now I'm going to be very careful not to touch anything uh, inside of the case while it's turned on. But you can see here uh, we have what 142 volts, something like that, um, and that's when it's touching right there. Oh, you can even see. I don't know if you saw that. There's some sparks going on there. Um, and then when it lifts off, when it's in the middle, it shows zero pretty much the whole way there until we get back around to the end here where it makes contact again and then yeah it shows seven volts or just a few volts six volts depending on how far over we can get it so yeah that's definitely the issue and that's the first thing i'm going to work on here it's a simple mechanical repair hopefully simple uh just a matter of bending that piece of metal back into place so yeah well, I think I got it repaired, and oh boy, is this thing finicky. Basically, there's a little set screw right here. You take it off, and it seems like that's the only adjustment. It's pretty simple, but actually, this floats in there. There's a little kind of bushing um, in the middle that connects to uh, the shaft, which does the rotating of the variac. And, well, what I ended up doing was I had to bend this tab in just a hair, and I had to bend this tab in just a hair. And then it kept interfering with the shield. There used to be a little piece of, uh, I don't know if you can see that, yeah, a little piece of metal on the end there. Not totally sure what the point of sort of that outer shield is, but anyway, I took it off because it kept getting in the way. So, yeah, uh, I think it's connecting all the way around now, though. I mean, if you look very closely on that little pin in the middle, it touches that circle just about all the way around. So I think it's adjusted properly, so should be able to plug it in and give it a test. Again, without touching anything inside, plug it in here, switch it on.
And now we can sweep the variac. This is well, one volt all the way down. Now we go up to 10, 20, 30. Oh, might be a little area in there that's still needs some work. 40, 50, 60, 70. Uh, about a hundred, hundred ten, hundred twenty, and one hundred forty. I think that's the top end of the range. There. Yep. So it's not perfect, but definitely better than before. I'll see if I can keep sort of adjusting it to see see how much better I can do. But I'm not totally confident because, well, I guess one option would be to completely replace the whole variac, but. Uh, I don't really want to do that. I think this one looks pretty good. Staco, that's a pretty standard brand. I bet you that I could get a replacement if I wanted to, but but I think I'll just leave this one in here because it's working fairly well. And I'm going to try to, you know, basically be using this myself for other repairs that I'll be working on. So, heck, yeah, if it's not perfect, that's okay, I think. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm going to try putting the case back together. We can test out all of the functions of this after that and and um, see if there's anything else that still needs to be repaired well I did finally get it working uh, I needed a couple of repairs one was getting that sweeper blade completely fixed um, so now that works pretty well and then uh, another one was the output wires weren't making a very good connection. I had to reseat the connector because they weren't uh, showing an output for a little while there. So if I, I'll show you now. Uh, the voltage that it reads is actually pretty true to what's uh, what's being shown on the readout internal. So if you see that, well, I guess it reads a little bit high. This is 133 and that's 144. Looks like it pegs out at 153. So yeah, it's a little high. It could probably use a calibration. wonder what it looks like on the low end. I guess it gets a little closer on the low end. Maybe it's some sort of a percentage off. But hey, it's pretty close. It does work. And to test it, if we want to test it under an actual load, uh, one thing that I could do is plug in my trusty power supply. It has its own power readout, so I could tell how many watts I'm pulling. So, for instance, if I wanted to attach a, a fan or something like that, I can pull a certain number of watts here and then compare it to watt. Uh, there's a power output setting. Uh, you can put it in on the safety analyzer. So I think I'll try that. And one thing that I think is interesting as well is at what voltage will this programmable DC power supply, just a cheap power supply off of Amazon, at what voltage will it power on? So you can try that. Just start sweeping through. Some beeping, 45 volts. Well, we know this reads a little bit low, so maybe more like 50 volts, but still, wow, <laughs> it's surprising. It's rated for 120 volts. Uh, it says on the back, you know, 115 volts slash 230 volts, depends on the voltage setting, but that's pretty interesting. I mean, does it work? Like, yeah, it seems to work. That's surprising too. I guess I could check the output of it. See if it's really capable of actually putting out the voltage it says it is. Not really, actually. Uh, it's supposed to be putting out 27. That's what it was set to. And it's only putting out. 20 volts. Uh, well, at least the readout is right there, though. That's uh, 
Well, pretty close to spot on. But I'm sure if I increase this, yeah, interesting. So it still isn't at the full 27, even at, well, probably about 60 volts AC. And then we give it, yeah, a full 100, 120. It's able to do 27, no problem. So <laughs> that's kind of interesting. I wouldn't have expected that. So then I've got these fans that I want to power. It's two 24-volt fans that are in series. So they're in series with each other, so they should still be 24 volts. They'll just pull twice as much current. Uh, they're rated for 2.4 watts, so I would expect right around 5 watts out of the both of them. And yeah, not the world's greatest pin setup here, but... See what we can make happen anyway. It's all low voltage, low power stuff, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, we'll give it 24 volts it asked for. And shebang. So pulling five watts, I guess. And uh, we're in the current mode right now, so 0.1 amps, which translates to 12 watts. So that tracks. I mean, this takes some power itself to run. Um, the fans also. So if we lower the voltage. So now we're pulling 4 watts. It's saying 10 watts. 2 watts, it's saying 7 there, and finally turn it off essentially, and yeah, 1 watt, 2 watts to power this thing, that's surprisingly low, but it could be possible. So anyway, I uh, just thought I'd share the update. Uh, safety analyzer seems to be working fine now, I'm going to start using it for some projects. Of course, I'll go th thoroughly test these um, other settings specifically the leakage and the uh, some of these other chassis ones um, just to make sure that those are working fine but yeah I mean it seems to work pretty well um, these other ones have uh, yet to be tested but hey I'm pretty happy with it so that's all for now I hope you learned something today maybe you can take a risk and buy one of these uh, for parts or broken ones yourself and if you do love to hear from you and see what projects you're working on thanks for watching Bye.